Hi guys. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to model a geodesic sphere or a geodesic dome in CAD. I'm using SOLIDWORKS, but what I'm going to explain will apply to any CAD software. And I'm going to make a model of an icosahedron, but these steps will also apply to any base polyhedron with any frequency subdivision. So if you're not familiar with what a geodesic polyhedron is, there's a Wikipedia page, which is a good starting point. Essentially, we take some base shape, which is usually a platonic solid for symmetry, in this case, an icosahedron, but it could also be a dodecahedron, for example. We then divide that <clears throat> according to some frequency number. And with these smaller surface subdivisions, in this case triangles, these are then projected out to a sphere. These don't have to be triangles, they can be some other shape, but this is the most common approach. Here's another example starting with a truncated icosahedron as your base shape. So geodesic domes were popularized by an architect named Buckminster Fuller uh, many, many decades ago. And they're kind of cool architectural feats, uh, but not super practical for making buildings and homes with. Just as a note, if I'm going a bit too fast in this video, you can refer to my website, mdesigns.space. I'll also put a link in the video description below. And there I've done a write-up of what I'm discussing in this video with a step-by-step -step guide of how to model this. I know sometimes that's a bit easier for people to follow. And essentially why I did this was because there's one kind of trick of how you project your flat subdivision to the outer surface of the sphere, which uh, I couldn't find anywhere else. And it's really useful to know because it allows you to model any geodesic um, sphere. Uh, and finally, at the end, you can download my files, which is a SOLIDWORKS file and a STEP file uh, as a reference for yourself. So jumping back to this model, uh, it's parametric, so it's all based off a single dimension. So I can go back and update this and it will rebuild accordingly. And you need to start with your base polyhedron. So as I mentioned, I'm using an icosahedron and I'll quickly jump through how to model an icosahedron. Uh, but if you're more interested in how you then get from this icosahedron to the geodesic sphere, uh, I'll timestamp everything in the video and you can jump ahead. So here I'm just doing a voiceover of my modeling process. So to start the icosahedron, I draw a five-sided pentagon and dimension one of the edges. Next, I do a 3D sketch where I'm drawing straight lines from each vertex of the pentagon, combining in a centralized point. So I want to make these edges the same length as the base pentagon. All edges should be the same length here. And I'm stacking that centralized point along the y-axis above the origin. So that gives the top kind of area of the icosahedron. Now I'm drawing a secondary reference pentagon, making it the same size as the first. And I want this to be halfway rotated between the first. So I draw a reference line and make that perpendicular to one of the original pentagon edges. Now I'm using that as a reference, so I'm drawing two lines to form a face of one of the icosa of the icosahedron and stacking that point vertically above or below the vertex of the reference pentagon. So now I can use that point highlighted there to create another plane and on this new plane draw a pentagon again making the vertex coincident with the end point of the surface. And from here, just doing a 3D sketch to link up all the relevant vertices. And now again, just repeating that 3D sketch on the other side, stacking the centralized point above the origin and making sure all edge lengths are the same. So this is kind of a wireframe of an icosahedron. Uh, here I go through and fill in this wireframe to give a bunch of flat surfaces. So just using the boundary surface tool. And just speeding this up because it's a bit tedious. So now that I have four surfaces, I can actually revolve these around a centralized axis. 
So I produce a reference axis and select the four surface bodies and do a circular pattern and revolve around 360 degrees with five instances. And this produces the icosahedron. So the final step I do is select all the surfaces and knit them together to create a solid. Now on to making the, the, the polyhedron geodesic. I draw a sphere which encloses the icosahedron. This is going to be used as a reference. So the sphere center point should align with the icosahedron center point, and the outside of the sphere should be coincident with the outer vertices of the icosahedron. Now I'm doing my subdivision pattern. So I'm doing a five frequency division. So <clears throat> I want five edges of smaller triangles along each outside edge. So I'm drawing them here and using the equal sketch relation. And this is just a matter of connecting all the dots essentially to produce my grid. So for reference, a five frequency pattern has five squared smaller triangles, so 25. A six frequency pattern would have 36 smaller triangles, for example. So this is essentially the flat pattern on the icosahedron. And now we want to project this out to the edge of the sphere. So I'm drawing a construction line here. And I'm making that construction line coincident with the vertices of the small triangles. So I just draw it and then select the vertice in the line and make them coincident. Then I'm making the outer endpoints of these construction lines on the surface of the sphere. So again, selecting the endpoint of these lines and then also selecting the sphere and selecting on surface. I found I also had to draw a few more points on the flat pattern, uh, just because not all of them had reference points at the vertices, specifically the ones in the center there. Uh, and I did it run into a problem later on. Just make sure when you're doing these that SolidWorks applies the correct relation. So there I got an error. Uh, and you just have to go back and delete whatever relations put in, and then select the lines that it's intersecting and do coincident. So in this case, we have quite a few of these lines being projected out. I also later found that it was a bit more stable when I was readjusting the scale. If instead of using the on surface relation with the endpoints in the sphere, I just made these lines equal to the radius of the sphere, which effectively achieves the same thing. But it just so happened later on the model rebuilt a bit better if I did it that way. So here you can see this took a little bit of time and it's quite sped up, but there's the end result. So it's kind of like a projection pattern from the center of the sphere or the icosahedron out to the edge, outside surface of the sphere. And all of the lines pass through the vertices of the small triangles. Now I'm doing a 3D sketch and I'm connecting the endpoints of these projection lines. And what this gives is the projected subdivision surface onto the outside of the sphere. Obviously, it's an approximation of the sphere because we have flat surfaces here. But essentially, this is kind of like the secret tip that I found. Um, and this applies for any geodesic sphere with any base polyhedron or any subdivision as a method of projecting the subdivision from the flat surface out to the sphere. So there I just filled in that 3D sketch grid with surfaces and I've knit, knitted those surfaces together. I'm doing that right here to give a single surface body. And now I can revolve this surface body <clears throat> around that centralized axis for five instances to give the top section. <clears throat> So again, here I go through and make some more reference axes and I can use opposing vertices of the icosahedron to make reference axes and revolving surface bodies around these axes to give the desired results. Note, in some cases, I have to use the skip instance button to make sure I don't end up with duplicate surfaces. And the skip instance 
each instance is represented by a little magenta dot in SolidWorks, which you can select to remove it. So again, if this video is a bit too fast paced, uh, please refer to my website where I've done a write up of these steps. I know sometimes that's a bit easier for people to follow. But here, more or less, I've finished the model. So I'm just selecting the surface bodies now, and there'll be 20 of them and knitting them together and also making a solid. So that solid there still looks a bit hollow, but it's just because the internal icosahedron is showing. So if I hide that, we can see it's yeah, an enclosed solid. At this point here, I'm just measuring some of the different areas of the small triangles for reference. And I go in and apply some color appearances now. So the color scheme I went for here is just that all small triangles of the same surface area have the same color. So it's a nice way to visualize um, yeah, the, the, which, which surfaces are essentially the same area. And in SOLIDWORKS, if you roll back um, the feature tree in this instance to before I did all the surface revolves, then these color appearances should carry over. Sometimes you need to go into your circular, parent, um, circular pattern and make sure that propagate visual appearances is activated. And there we go. That's the final model of a five frequency geodesic sphere made of a base icosahedron. So uh, as I mentioned, I can go back here and change the base dimension of the pentagon, which is forming the icosahedron. You could set your model up in a way where the base value is derived from the diameter of the sphere, which yeah, is probably a bit more relevant if you're building a geodesic dome or something. But nevertheless, all this, this whole model is just driven off a single dimension and it's parametric, so I can easily go back and change it. Uh, this is like a benefit <clears throat> of modeling it this way as opposed to using an online calculator where you get specific values of all these small triangles just for one diameter. And here finally, just for a bit of fun, I'm bringing in my adjustable human figure and playing around with it. So yeah, if you like this video, uh, like and subscribe and also check out my website if you want access to my files for reference. Thanks.